This video is for teachers. I'm going to show you how to make a form letter grade report and email it automatically to all your parents. Oh, I should mention, if you're thinking, oh god, he's showing the information for the students and the grades, he's going to get in so much trouble. Don't worry, these names are all fake, so um, I'm not uh, violating anybody's privacy. When I do come to a point where students' names show up because of the grade software, I will gray out, uh, well, I will blur that information so you can't see the student information. But the, these are all fake names. This is what the finished product is going to look like. Of course, you can adjust this to include whatever information that you want to include. And my little uh, paragraphs and uh, information, uh, you know, that's just something specific to me. So you can say whatever you want in your form letter, of course. Um, but notice how as I switch from student to student, you know, the main body of the letter stays the same. But notice how these names are changing. So uh, each parent will get a grade report. And of course, the grades are changing as well. So um, this will be automatically sent to all the parents with the individual grades of each student and with the name changing for each student. There are three main steps to this process. Step one is to make a spreadsheet of email addresses. I'm going to use Google Forms to automate that, but you could do it uh, manually if you wanted to. Step two is to make a grade summary spreadsheet. Uh, I'm going to be using the gradebook software that my county uses, my school system. It's called eSchool Plus. So if you use a different system, then the steps here will be a little bit different. Um, but I'm betting that you can uh, adapt it for your system. And step three will be to make a form letter and email, email it to all parents at once. Uh, that's just a feature of Microsoft Word. I should say up front that this does take some time. Um, I don't know a way to automatically do this just using my gradebook software. So uh, I have five classes and it usually takes me an hour to do all these three steps and uh, you know from the beginning to end and email all my parents but um, you know the way I used to do it it would take so much time that there's no way I would be able to email all of the parents I would only email the parents of students who are in danger of failing that type of thing uh, the students who were doing great their parents probably didn't hear from me uh, so I'm glad to invest the hour that it takes to do this every once in a while so that I can contact all of my parents. All right, let's get started. Step one, make an email address spreadsheet. And I'm going to use Google Forms to automate this. You're going to need a Google account if you're going to use this uh, Google Form step to automate this process. So get a Google account if you haven't already signed up. Uh, but in my browser, I'm just going to go to google.com forward slash forms. And that brings me here. So I'm just going to open up a blank form. I'm going to change the title here to contact email form. And I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. I need this question to be a short answer question. And of course, we need to know the names of the students. So I'm going to go ahead and put first name. Um, let's make this required. Now I'm just going to copy this item, this question, and I'll change it to last name. I'll hit copy again and I'll say guardian <laughs> one email alright and we'll copy it again and I'll say guardian two email
That's really all you need for the Google form. Uh, when I actually do this, I collect more information than this, um, but I'm just going to keep it simple for now. So clicking on this preview button, you can see what the students are going to see when they uh, go to this link. So they'll just put in their name and they'll write the email addresses for their parents. You can get the link to share this with your students by clicking on send. And here's where you get the link. Um, you can shorten the link to make it a little bit easier in case anyone has to type this by hand. But probably you will wind up uh, posting this for your students on um, Google Classroom or OneNote or something like that. Or maybe you know how to make that QR code so they can scan it with their phones. Either way, all they need is the link and all of a sudden they're giving you their contact information. So here I'm pretending I'm a student and I'm filling in my name, Mary Jones, the email addresses, and I'm going to submit just so you can sort of see what it looks like. So now because I've submitted two responses um, as though I were two different students, you can see that I have this little indicator here showing that I have these responses. Um, so if I click on this, then uh, this little button right here that says create spreadsheet, this is how you will get the spreadsheet that we need. So just click on this button. And just go ahead and hit create. Okay, so that takes you to this spreadsheet that looks like this. So this is um, what we need for step one. Now I'm going to show you a fake version where I have more filled in. So imagine that you had a full class of students who submitted their contact information. It might look something like this. So that's the end of step one. Now we've made an email address spreadsheet. So let's move on to step two make a grade summary spreadsheet. This is going to be using my teacher gradebook software and again the one we use is called eSchool Plus. Our goal is to end up with something like this where we have the students names associated with whatever information we want to show up on that form letter and the end and along with the email addresses uh, that we will use to automatically send out those form letters to all of the parents. Now obviously I've just uh, put in a couple of fake email addresses and just copied it all the way down. Um, but these would be unique. So here I am at eSchool Plus. I would scroll down if I were you and uh, where it says reports, hit this delete button and clear out any reports that you see so that you will be able to easily find the reports that we're about to create. Okay, I'm going to open this gradebook. Um, on the next several steps, you're going to see blurred out names uh, because this is my actual gradebook. Okay, so um, here we have the uh, the gradebook. So what I want to do is first print some sort of a report where I'm going to have access to these averages. This is what I really want right now. So um, I'm going to go here and in this software, make sure you can see it all, I'm going to go down to a printable gradebook. So if I do that, um, uh, I'm just going to unclick that and I'll just hit run. Okay, I need to hit Excel, uh, export to Excel. After a few seconds, um, up to 30 seconds or so, this will pop up and I will just hit OK. All right, and then we can just close this, and I'm going to go back to the home screen. All right, so if I scroll down to that area where we deleted all the reports a minute ago, 
you'll see that uh, we have these new reports here. The one that says uh, XLS at the end, that's the one we want because that's going to be an Excel spreadsheet. So I can just click on that. Now in my browser, it uh, shows up over here in the corner and lets me know when it has been downloaded. And when it's done, I'm just going to click on that. So you get a spreadsheet like this. Um, now, of course, I've uh, changed all the names to Mary and Steve to protect the innocent. Uh, so I'm going to change the name of this sheet uh, by right, -click on, right clicking on it and picking rename. And I'm just going to call this all because it represents all of the information that goes into this student's, uh, the student's grades. Now I will go back to eSchools and delete these reports. All right, just so I don't get confused. And now I'm going to open up that grade book again. Now let's say that in my form letter, what I want to include is the overall average for each student. Um, but then I want the homework average, the quiz average, and the test average. So I've got the overall average already in the spreadsheet that we just made. So now I need the homework average. So I will go and select the homework category. So that's going to uh, exclude everything and give you numbers just based on the homework. So these are homework averages now. So I will just once again go ahead over and uh, do a report, a printable grade book. I don't need that. And this is the same as last time. OK, and back home. So once again, we have created a report, a spreadsheet. So I will click on the one that says XLS. So you get another spreadsheet, but this time what you really have are homework averages. So I'm going to change the name of this and call it homework. Now if I go up to the top and grab that title, I can slam this to the right hand side and uh, there, uh, in that way it will only be on the right hand side. So if I go back and open up the old spreadsheet, right, the one that has all the information, so now um, I can go back and forth between the new one that has homework and the old one that has everything. So I need to put these together. So if I come over here and grab the homework tab, I can drag it onto the original spreadsheet. So now I have one spreadsheet with two different tabs, one with the averages, uh, the overall averages, and a new tab with homework. So uh, you can just repeat this procedure until you have a tab for uh, quizzes, tests, whatever you want. So now we all have all the tabs, each of which contains the information that we need. The overall averages, the homework averages, the quiz averages, and the test averages. So we're going to make one more tab and call it summary. So I'm just going to rename this summary because here's where, where we will pull together all of the information for the form letter in one place. Go ahead and create headings like these in the top row representing whatever information you want to be included on your form letter. Now I'm going to get the student names and the email addresses from that a spreadsheet that was created from the Google Form responses. 
So here I am back at that Google Form response spreadsheet and I will just highlight all of these names. I'm hitting control C to copy into memory and uh, now I'm going back to my spreadsheet and I will hit control V um, but you can copy and paste however you feel comfortable and I trust you know how to copy and paste things and I'll do the same thing with the email so back to the spreadsheet the responses from my Google form I'll highlight I'm doing control C back to Excel and control V okay I will get the rest of this information from the tabs that I created already so um, back to the tab that says all so these are the overall averages for each student the total grade so I'm just gonna highlight this column and control C back to the summary tab control V so there's everyone's overall average now the homework averages I'll just do the same thing right highlight them all control C back to the summary control V okay and I'll just repeat that for the quiz averages and the test averages okay now this spreadsheet has all of the information that I'm going to need for my form letter somewhere along the way you will save that spreadsheet that we just created um, pay attention to where you saved it because you will have to locate it later so I have saved my spreadsheet and called it demo class number one so that was the end of step two we made a grade summary spreadsheet so now it's time to move on to the third and final step where we will make the actual form letter and email it to all the parents at once alright open up a blank document for Microsoft Word and just begin to compose your form letter the way you want it to look I'm gonna keep it very simple hello here is a quick update All right, here's where I'm going to put a little table with all the information. So um, I'm going to insert a table. Um, this table is going to need to be have six columns and two rows. Go ahead and type your headings into the top row like I did. I think I'll make this filled with a gray color alright here's the step where we turn this into a form letter right here you see a tab that says mailings go ahead and click on that so you want to select the recipients meaning we're gonna uh, pick that file the uh, Excel spreadsheet that we just created so um, Let's see, I'm not sure you can see this. Let me move over a little bit. So mailings, select recipients. I'm going to choose use existing list. All right, so I'm going to navigate to wherever I saved that file. So remember, I called it demo class number one. So I'm going to pick that. And I'll hit open. Now remember, we put all of our information in the summary tab so I'm gonna choose that okay so behind the scenes it is all linked up now so now what I want to do is uh, go back to mailings and insert merge field so if I click on this 
I get all of the headings from that summary tab of my spreadsheet. So if I want to put a first name in here, I'll just click first name. If I want to put a last name here, I'll put a last name. Okay, overall average. Boom. Homework average. There you go. Quiz average. And test average. Okay, so we can uh, uh, preview this. Go back to mailings. And I believe if I just start clicking on this, or okay, maybe I need to hit preview results. All right, to be honest, I kind of forgot about this because um, it's giving me this, uh, the averages in this decimal form um, instead of a clean percentage. I fixed that once at the beginning of the year and I never had to deal with it again. Um, so I sort of forgot about this. So let me pause and figure out how I fixed that. Okay, so I googled it and I think I figured out how to solve the problem. What I'm going to do is highlight the field and I'm going to hit control F9. So I'm going to highlight the entire field like this and then I'll hit control F9. What that does, um, you see these braces that appear around the, the average field. This creates a space where I can add some extra code to it. So um, you need to put an equal sign in the front and at the end, but still inside the brace, you need to put times 100. And I'm using the asterisk for the multiplication. And then you need a backslash and a number sign like hashtag and then 0%. It's kind of like a computer code. So let's go back. And I'm going back to mailings. Let me go up here so you can see. And I'm going to try to preview and see what we've got. So see how now it has changed to a normal looking percent the way we would want. So um, I'm just going to do that for, for all of these. Um, I can still do it while these numbers are showing. Again, I can highlight the entire field. And then I'm going to hit Control F9. I got to highlight again. Control F9. In the front, I need the equal sign. And at the end, I need times 100 backslash pound sign 0%. Okay, I fixed another one. I'll show you an extra trick on the next one. So again, I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to hit Control F9, put that equal sign in the front, and at the end, I'm going to put times 100 backslash, but this time I'm going to put 0, 0.0. Ah, I forgot the hashtag. Okay number sign 0, 0.0 percent. All right, watch what happens differently. All right, now I have this extra decimal precision. So I usually like to round to whole numbers, so I usually do it the first way. But if you want to have an extra decimal or two, you can do that. All right, let's do it one more time. So Control F9, put an equal sign at the beginning, and at the end, you do times 100 backslash pound sign or hashtag and this time I'll even put 0, 0.00 percent and let's preview it one more time so now I have two decimal places so you can decide whether you want whole numbers one decimal place two decimal place 
um, you can choose however you want to do that. You will only have to do this code editing business one time because from now on you will use this letter that you've created as your template and you'll just modify it um, every time. So here I've added in a little paragraph that I like to include um, reminding parents about how students should go about uh, dealing with their homework properly. Um, but notice right here where I just have the word student. This is where I would really like uh, each student's individual name to show up. So what I do is uh, I can just highlight that word and instead I'm going to insert the merge field and I'll use the student's first name. Okay, better put a little space in there. Um, so now, if I preview those results, then um, it's going to go ahead and show the student name in that position. All right, of course, you can make this uh, letter say whatever you want. So now we're all finished and we are ready to send out this letter to each of our parents. And the way you do that is you come to where it says finish uh, and merge. If you click on that, one of the options is to send email messages. If you choose that, you have the drop down menu. Um, and here's where you decide uh, which field in the spreadsheet you're going to use for your emails. So uh, I'm just going to pick email one for example. So in the subject line you might uh, write something like pre-calculus update. Alright that's what's going to show up in the subject line of every email. So if I were to hit OK right now this message would be emailed to uh, all of the email addresses that were on the spreadsheet with the student names that we created. And uh, what I would do is uh, this would go away at that point and I would come back and I'd do it one more time uh, but this time I would choose email 2. And uh, so this time it will send the email to guardian 2. And that's really it. We completed the third and final step. We made a form letter and we emailed it to all parents at once.